one definition of what an inverse function is. Uh, there are several different ones. It really just depends on the perspective that you're looking from. Um, so this definition is talking about the fact that if your original function has the point a, b, okay, a being your x value and b being your y value, um, then the inverse function switches this. It just switches x and y. So your x coordinate is now b and your y coordinate is now a for the inverse function. Okay, that's one relationship between inverse functions and the original functions is that you just switch the x's and y's. So if we have this collection of points, 2, negative 3, negative 4, 8, 0, negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, then the inverse is just going to take all those points and it's going to flip them around. Okay? Um, we have a special type of function that if its inverse is also a function, meaning it passes the vertical line test, because sometimes inverses, inverse functions are not actually functions, okay, because uh, they don't pass the vertical line test. But if a function and its inverse are both functions, then it's called one-to-one -one because that means every x has only one y and vice versa. Okay, every y has only one x. So that's not true about um, a simple example to give for that is x squared. Okay, x squared is a parabola. I'm just simplest case scenario. It goes through the origin. Yes, every x has one y. It passes the vertical line test. Okay, but not every y has only one x. If we talk about y equals 3, then there are two x values that give a y value of 3. So um, the inverse function of x squared is not a function. So x squared is not considered a one-to-one -one function because not every y has only one x. Um, so let's look at just this example right here of the points. Okay, 2, negative 3, negative 4, 8, 0, negative 3 and negative 4, negative 1, would its inverse function be a function? No. The inverse, and I've listed the inverse too, okay, the inverse here has two y values for the x value of negative 3. You could have also looked at that from the perspective of, if you look at the original, negative 3 appears as, as a y value twice. So that means it's not a one-to-one -one function, meaning that its inverse is not going to be a function. Okay? It can be defined as a relation, it's just not going to be an actual function. Um, here is another definition of the inverse. I don't really want you to write it down, I just want you to listen to what I have to say about it. Um, if f of x is a one-to-one -one function, it has a domain of d, a range of r, then the inverse function, we use this notation right here, it's a negative one, it looks like an exponent. It's not actually an exponent, it's the inverse function notation. Um, then we can write what we just looked at, the a, b, and b, a thing, we can, uh, we can look at that in function notation, that's what we're looking at right here. Um, it's just saying f inverse of b is a if f of a is b. So it's flipping the values. Okay? A um, little note there beside the star. Uh, as I was mentioning, f to the negative 1 of x is not a negative exponent, so you can't get rid of it by moving it to the denominator. Okay? That is function notation for the inverse. So we have four um, general steps for finding the inverse of a function algebraically. Now, I would write these down. So I this, um, these are the steps regardless of what type of function we are trying to find the inverse of. Okay, You're, you start, um, if it's in function notation, if you have f of x on the left side, then just replace it with y. Okay, so we're used to seeing the x's and the y's. Um, now, 
Since uh, inverses switch x and y values to find the inverse, we are going to switch x and y. So that means for every y we see in the equation, we're going to put an x in its place. And for every x we see, we're going to put a y in its place. And then we're going to solve for y. Now step three is where you're going to end up with a little bit of difference, depending on what type of function it is. It's going to take different steps, different techniques to actually solve for y. Um, sometimes it's actually impossible to solve for y. We're not really going to look at any of those. Um, but you may have to use exponentials, you may have to take square roots, it just kind of depends. Um, and then at the very end, when you have y by itself, uh, then you need to replace that with the inverse notation of f, f inverse of x. Um, so tomorrow we will 